Right, so we're back on again. Um, okay, uh, there is one question in the seminar on Garfinkel, Harold Garfinkel, and ethnomethodology. Um, and I guess it is the only chance we have really to discuss him as a seminar group, so it's worth actually just introducing it, and hopefully some of you will have um, read something about him. Um, but it's definitely a character worth getting to know. Um, his major book, published in originally in 1967, but republished uh, many times since then, has had enormous impact on um, not only social theory, but also um, social research methods. Ethnomethodology is what Garfinkel um, uh, first phrase first coined by Garfinkel, um, and what Garfinkel was interested in are what he refers to as the methods that people use in order to get around their everyday social worlds. He's not interested in sort of grand theory. In fact, he doesn't even like the theory um, himself. He actually thinks that social theory itself is simply a set of methods that communities of people called social theorists kind of engage in to get around their worlds. Um, Garfinkel is a very, very um, um, revolutionary thinker, very, very popular in the mid-1960s, uh, particularly with uh, students who um, <clears throat> perhaps didn't want to get to grips with Parsons and thought that Garfinkel made a lot of sense. Um, particularly, they took the message from it that you don't really have to understand or get to know Parsons or social theory or anything like that because all you really need to know is about Garfinkel. Um, he gets a lot of uh, flack in his theory. His theory is thought to be kind of very lightweight um, because of uh, because of this reputation. But in fact, I, I think it's extremely profound stuff. And at the end of the day, it really does say a lot about the social world and what I like to call the the fragility of the social world. The fact that although everything looks to us very strong, very stable, a bit random at times but nevertheless behind it all there's some kind of weighty substantial reality which we can fall back on if um, our current circumstances don't kind of hold up. Um, Garfinkel paints a picture of the social world as a very very fragile thing that could all fall apart and literally go beyond and the term he uses is, is repair. Things can fall out. Anyway before I get into all that let me just quickly say that um, where he came from. Uh, Garfinkel was a student of Talcott Parsons at Harvard, uh, uh, a PhD research student, and he went along there uh, to be supervised by Parsons in social theory. Uh, however, secretly, um, Garfinkel went off to the library and instead of getting on with the work that Parsons thought he was getting on with, he was actually reading phenomenology. And in particular, he was reading Alfred Schutz and all that stuff about tacit assumptions and background expectancies and all the things that we looked at in shoots um, is what really excited uh, Garfinkel. He also read Heidegger, Martin, Martin Heidegger, um, and I'm sure that if Parsons had known about this he would have been completely horrified. Anyway, Harold Garfinkel, absolutely kind of in some incredible ideas and I'm so sorry that uh, most of you um, are kind of currently, your minds are turning now towards the semester assignments and essays and all that kind of thing, and probably this will have an impact on, on your reading. But if we just kind of focus for a minute uh, on Garfinkel's kind of central ideas, Garfinkel really is only interested in um, the moment in which actors kind of come together. So in that sense, he's very similar to the symbolic interactionists we looked at a couple of weeks ago. Um, and the important thing about actors coming together is that they can engage in a type of waffle. They can engage together in um, what Garfinkel referred to as accounting practices. In other words, um, I can come up to you in the street and say, oh, um, where are you going? You know, and you'll tell me and then you, I can say something like, uh, well, why are you going there? And that seems very innocuous and very superficial and kind of uninteresting. 
But for Garfinkel, it is the substance of social reality. Because what he's saying is that actors in those situations um, actually have to have, have answers for those questions. In other words, I can say, you know, where are you going? You say, well, I'm going into Portswood. Now, I might then say, why are you going to Portswood? And you um, have to have the skill, even if you don't give me an answer, if you tell me to, to sod off or something like that, which is your right to do, nevertheless, you must have a s skill, the necessary resources and wherewithal, to provide me with an answer. And it's our skill to be able to account for everything that we do, whether or not it's a true account or not, doesn't really matter, provided the, the, the other actor kind of accepts it, um, is the most important thing that knits reality together. This is a very, very kind of, it's not a difficult concept to grasp, but it's, it's an incredible concept to grasp. In other words, the problem with reading Garfinkel is that um, people just simply don't believe uh, that this is actually the basic nature and, uh, and fabric of reality. And in fact, you know, for many, many years after, during the 1970s and 80s, after studies in ethnomethodology um, was published, you know, lots of professional sociologists completely misinterpreted, um, I think they did anyway, um, you know, the basic profound principles that um, Garfinkel had actually set out in this book, Studies in Ethnomethodology. He did, um, uh, you know, a whole kind of series of studies of different kinds of companies, firms and institutions. The Los Angeles Suicide Prevention Centre. Um, he did a study of um, lawyers and kind of jurisprudence and how law courts work and so on. And what he did was literally study the methods, and that's all, just the methods that actors use to keep and maintain the current situation going how they kept it and maintained it in what he calls good repair. And if a social situation or a social interaction is in what he refers to as good repair, then that means all the actors um, know how to, when they're called upon to do so, provide some story, bit of waffle, some sort of account um, that enables people to carry on their exchanges. You know, um, so... I mean, it's probably unbelievable if you know you say to me, um, you know, where am I going? Oh, I'm going to Portswood. Um, and then I say, you say to me, why are you going there? I said, well, I, I need to get a component for my spaceship because I need to get back to Mars for the weekend or something like that. You might think quite rightly um, that I'm taking the P. The thing is, though, I'm able to provide some kind of an account. The horrifying, what I find quite horrifying, what many, many kind of sociologists have never really kind of grasped, is that that is all that's important for Garfinkel. That if you want to, when he kind of studied the Suicide Prevention Centre, he said, look, we can analyse this institution from the point of view of accounting practices, ethno-methods of the actors um, involved. In other words, you know, this institution is not really about, um, you know, kind of preventing suicide. It's about a bunch of people um, who get together, sit around in committees, and when the suicides do happen, um, this committee, you know, has to provide some kind of account, some kind of a story, why the authorities, excuse me, um, why the authorities weren't able to engage with that suicide, uh, and so everyone kind of gets let off. So it's about the production of appropriate stories and appropriate accounts. Um, if you, I hope you know that stimulated you enough to kind of engage with ethno methodology, and uh, Garfinkel. And um, I hope that if you read him, some of you will get at least some sense of the level of surprise and disbelief and some of the, com frankly, some of the comedy in his approach to the social world. Thank you very much for listening.